Welcome to the Inbound Logistics video podcast series presented by Inbound Logistics Magazine. Today, we're focusing on how to better navigate the 3PL market, particularly with regards to meeting shipper demands while balancing business success. Joining us is Doug Wagner, CEO of Echo Global Logistics, and here's our host, Amy Roach. Thank you, Jeff. And hi, Doug. Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Amy. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So I'm going to start out with a big congratulations to Echo. Uh, your company was recently selected uh, the number one 3PL in our inbound logistics reader choice poll. Uh, and I understand this is the eighth year in a row. So, uh, you know, big, big honor there. Um, tell me from your point of view, we, you know, it's a big deal to us at inbound logistics to do this every year. Does it mean a lot to you there? And uh, what is sort of the secret sauce that you'd say allows Echo to continually be chosen uh, you know, as, as such a good partner for shippers. Yes, well, it's a big deal to us too. And, you know, it's an eight peat as we call it. Um, and our employees get behind it. Uh, they're excited to be recognized by our shippers and our carriers. And we put a lot of energy into cultivating those relationships. It starts with the very first day that people walk in the door at Echo and go through eight weeks of training. Uh, we impart our value system that's called the Echo Way. And, uh, I think that a big part of our secret sauce is just how we treat customers and carriers, uh, th that personal touch, the em empathy that we have with uh, what they're trying to accomplish, uh, combined with the technology that we empower our people with. And, and uh, we take a lot of pride in the recognition and, and thank you for that. Absolutely. Sounds like a good formula there. Um, and it's a good way to segue into, uh, I'm curious about, obviously, you work very closely with shippers for a long time. You know, what are some of the things that they are really focused on looking for when they're partnering with a 3PL? Uh, and then in contrast, I guess, what are some of like the red flags that shippers should be aware of that will not bode well for, you know, a good 3PL partnership? You know, at the end of the day, um, shippers hire all transportation companies to move their goods to their clients. So, uh, they, they want seamless transportation from, from origin to destination. They want it to be on time. They want, they want it to be picked up on time. They want it to be delivered on time. They don't want it lost or damaged. They want an accurate invoice. And, and that would be the sort of the pure execution part of our business. And, and that's true of whether you're an asset-based trucking company or a non-asset-based 3PL. Um, they also want a fair price and uh, everybody's cost conscious. So, you know, I would say that you know, price is the sort of the cost of admission. You've got to be in the ballpark, but then beyond price, you've got to deliver a great service. And then you have to have follow through because in our industry, things go wrong. And when things go wrong, you know, what are you going to do to fix it? And, uh, you know, we find, and I mentioned earlier that the relationship component is a very uh, Im important aspect of how we do business with people because we want them to have trust in us that uh, we're going to give them a fair transaction. And that if something doesn't go quite right, we're going to fix it. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, another thing that we do that I know you're familiar with uh, in the same uh, 3PL edition is we have a original market research report that we call 3PL Perspectives, where we survey the market from the 3PL side and the shipper side. And uh, I'd love to just get some of your insight on some of the key findings, again, as, as someone with a lot of experience in the 3PL market. Um, so on the shipper side, our results showed that the top three challenges shippers believe they're facing right now are cutting transport costs, uh, business process improvement, and improving customer service. Um, so do you sort of see that from your customers that those are you know, some top crucial things they're worried about? Yeah, I completely agree. Um, you know, we find that, of course, everybody wants to save money. That's just part of doing business. And, and uh, you know, but at the same time, shippers look at a spectrum of, of service and quality versus price, you know, and, and some are more on one end of the spectrum than the other. Some people are all about price. Some people are all about service. Most customers are somewhere in between, you know, and it's, it's our job to recognize what's important to them and deliver that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, price gets pretty close. And so beyond that, people look who are going to, who are going to deliver the service and who do I like to do business with? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, may not look like it, but I got to get a haircut later today, you know, and I could go to Supercuts and get a really quick, cheap haircut. Mm -hmm. But instead, I, I pay probably twice as much. And I go see a guy named Gino who gives me a, a latte when I walk in the door and gives me a big hug and we have a great conversation. And, you know, my haircut only takes about 20 minutes, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's a very 
nice experience for me and I pay a little bit more for that. You know, and we find the same thing is true in, in transportation and shipping. People uh, will generally pay a little bit more, but not too much more to have confidence that the transaction is going to go without a hit, hitch, uh, that they like who they're doing business with. And there's a, some relationship component there and that we do have the tools and the technology and the data science to improve processes where we can. You know, a big part of our business is managed transportation. We're not just a, a freight broker. And, and so for our managed transportation clients, you know, we, we engage deeply with their shipping processes. We get to know their customers, their locations, their employees. We integrate with their technology. And, and that's all about process improvement and, and process integration. So, you know, it, it's really that triad of price, service, and, and process, I think, that you mentioned. Uh, that's exactly what shippers are looking for. Yeah, yeah. And I guess if you can, as a 3PL, provide all three, then that's really the key to, you know, keeping that customer for a long time, I would imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, on the 3PL side now, the top challenges that came back, uh, number one, no surprise, was rising operational costs. Uh, technology investment was number two. And then number three, finding, training, and retaining qualified labor. Uh, so talk a little bit about, you know, how that aligns with what ECHO is focused on and uh, the challenges that you're looking at. Well, I agree with that also. I mean, you know, we're in an inflationary environment, so the cost of everything is going up, uh, aside from maybe <laughs> trucking capacity, but that will eventually go up too. Uh, that's that's very cyclical, as you know, but uh, employee costs are going up. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's true of, of every type of business. We also invest more and more in technology. You know, we, we invest uh, over $80 million per year in uh, technology and data science. And, and uh, we think that that's a differentiating factor, but it's also, you know, expensive. And, and uh, you know, there is a, a lot of our co competition are making similar investments. And, and then finally, on the people aspect, uh, it's, it's difficult to find quality people. You know, we, it's, it's probably our most important asset. We, we make a, a large investment in training and uh, getting people adapted into our culture. And so uh, finding the, the right people is always hard because they've got to have the right attitude. They've got to have the right motivations. They've got to be willing to buy into our value system that we call the echo way. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but, you know, we think we're pretty good at finding those people. Yeah, I think a lot of 3PLs, you know, that we've spoken to recently are really focused a lot on that labor. The, the cost and the technology investment, I think, is kind of always there. The labor is maybe a little bit more of a timely um, issue. I don't know off the spot if there's anything that you found that you've done with labor that's really kind of translated into big improvements for you. Any training programs or, um, you know, what, what is it, I guess, that allows you to, to keep those talented uh, workers? Well, I think it's all about the culture, right? So you've got to create an environment where people want to work. And, and uh, you know, we, we have a culture that's work hard and play hard, you know, and, and you have to, you know, employees today, especially young employees, want to know that, you know, you're investing in them. You know, you're investing in their skill set. You're investing in their future. You're investing in their career track. And we do. You know, we have uh, not only do we train people for eight weeks when they walk in the door, but we have ongoing training that, you know, continues to develop their skill sets and, and makes them more valuable as an employee and, and helps their career. We also have a mentorship program. You know, part of our, our uh, development of employees is to find what we believe are high performers and people that have high potential and pair them with senior uh, leaders in our company uh, all the way up to and including me. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have me uh, men mentees that we're responsible for developing them sort of offline, you know, more from an, an advice and a wisdom standpoint uh, to help them think about their careers and, and how to advance. And, and uh, when, when employees feel that you're investing in them and that you care about them, uh, they work harder, they care more, and they stay longer. And, you know, turnover, frankly, is a big problem in our industry yeah. uh, because people will come and you make an investment in them and, and they leave uh, later to, you know, greener pastures. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. And the way you make it happen is by make them feel at home and want to stay at Echo and, and develop their career here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, so we touched a little bit on, uh, you know, the idea of balancing uh, cost and service. And that was another thing that came up when we asked uh, the top reasons for a failed 3PL partnership. So 36% of our shippers cited poor customer service. 
29% said failed expectations were to blame and 21% pinned it um, on cost. So, you know, that's a, it's a pretty even mix there. Uh, and again, what, what do you think, I guess, is the best way for 3PLs and shippers to work together on those three different aspects so that you do have a, a positive relationship and not a failed partnership? Well, you've got to find something. I think it comes down to trust, right? There are, it's, it's easy to become a 3PL. You know, the barriers to entry are pretty low. Doesn't take a lot of capital. Um, all you need is, you know, some shippers and some carriers and, and get in the middle of that and, and try to make a margin, right? Mm -hmm. Consequently, there are a lot of 3PLs out there that, you know, aren't in it for the right reasons. They're, they're just, you know, in it for the money. Um, I think, you know, we've seen a lot of examples of double brokering and, and things that generally are not well accepted and can have bad outcomes. And so you got to make sure that your partner is trustworthy and, and dependable. Uh, I think you got to depend, make sure that your partner has the scale to be effective. You know, buying transportation capacity um, is difficult because of the size of our country and the number of trucking companies. You know, we deal with 50,000 trucking companies and 30,000 shippers. And so we're essentially able to make our own market. And, you know, that gives us great buying power. We're able to to buy capacity in lanes where truckers need help. And we're able to sell that capacity to shippers where they need a good deal. And so it's through that size and scale that we have uh, empowered by, you know, AI and algorithms and things that help us do load matching better mm -hmm. that, that allow us to not only provide a great service for the shipper, but also at a great value, you know? So uh, scale has its privileges. And, and I think you, if you're looking for a 3PL, you want to find somebody that has the scale that, that you can take advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and scale also on the technology side, I think you mentioned an $80 million spend uh, or investment rather each year in technology. Um, that was another question that we asked, uh, what were the key technologies that you know shippers were looking for and that 3PLs were investing in? And no surprise, again, uh, AI was the top tech listed there. So can you share a little bit about, you know, I guess, uh, twofold, both what Echo may be doing on the AI space and uh, what you see kind of as the overall role of AI in the supply chain today and, you know, going forward? Sure. You know, we started investing in what we call strategic analytics. Um, some people call it data science and today people call AI, but um, we started investing that back in 2014. And, you know, we were using neural networks and machine learning for things like price discovery. Uh, you know, knowing what knowing what's the price of a truckload from Los Angeles to Chicago at two o'clock, you know, on Thursday. Because the price of, of truckload capacity can change by time of year, by time of month, by day of week, and by time of day. And so, you know, having insight to what the price is going to be makes us a better buyer of capacity and you know we perform better for our customers so that was one of the early uses that we had with ai it also helps us to automate so if we're in a routing guide with a large shipper and they've got a a spot board with thousands of loads on it you know rather than having a rep go through load by load and figure out what sort of price we should bid you know we have ai that scrapes the entire load board comes up with the price and submits it back electronically, you know, in milliseconds. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we're able to bid on 100% of the freight with very uh, intelligent pricing. We get a better win rate uh, and, and a better better deal for our customers. We look at things like uh, shipper and carrier behavior. You know, we know where carriers want to, to move their trucks. We, we know the lanes that shippers need to ship in. Um, recently, we've started uh, with, you know, the sort of recent advent of large language models. We've uh, created our own internal LLM where we've combined, you know, one of the, the top LLMs in the market with our own proprietary data. So we can do things like, you know, rather than me look at a report, I can go into my team's bot and say, you know, who are the top five sales reps this week mm -hmm. and who are their top five customers and, you know, how many shipments did they give us? And, and I can literally ask questions about our business and get the answer without having to go find a report and, and look at that report and interpret it. Mm -hmm. um, we're using uh, LLMs to do natural language processing. Echo gets over a million emails a day. Um, about 60,000 of those emails are customers saying, you know, give me a rate quote. Um, we've got another 30,000 emails saying, you know, where's my freight? And, and those are emails that can be answered by an AI and, you know, 
go get the answer to their question, write the email back, put it in front of the sales rep to hit the send button. So not only are we getting them a concise, accurate answer instantly, but we're also dramatically improving the capacity and the productivity of our people so that they can handle a lot more transactions in a day. So uh, those are the, some of the things that we're doing. Uh, matching loads between carriers and shippers is an important algorithm that we use. And, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of this for some time, but we have a whole roadmap of new projects on the drawing board. And I think, uh, you know, as we speak, you know, beyond Echo, there are a lot of third party technology companies that are starting to create some of these tools that we've already built. Uh, and, and we'll make them more and more available to other players in the market. And, and you'll see a lot more uh, utilization of AI and uh, data science in general in how the transportation industry conducts business. Absolutely. Really interesting. I think people sort of get a little uh, you know, nervous around the, the whole idea of AI, but the, the increased efficiency that you're describing you know, sounds like a, like a no-brainer advantage for a business, especially at your scale. Yeah, I mean, if you can take a person that's uh, booking uh, 15 loads a day and allow them to book 30 loads a day, you know, everybody wins. The employee yeah. makes more money. The company uh, has has uh, does more with less. The, the customers get faster answers and better prices. So uh, I, I think it's an exciting time. Absolutely. All right, great. One more question as we uh, wrap up, just, I guess, sort of put your crystal ball hat on, if that's a thing. Um, I'd love to get your take on the 3PL market, you know, for the rest of this year and into 2025. Uh, what do you see as a leading 3PL? What do you see coming down the pike, you know, for the sector uh, when it comes to satisfying customer demands, balancing what we talked about with cost and service? Uh, you know, what are, you, what are your outlook for the rest of the, the year? Well, as you know, it's been a soft rate market now for, what, 18 months. Um, you know, we're expecting that to flip at some point in time, but I, I'm not quite sure when. I thought it would happen in 24. Uh, it feels to me now like it's probably uh, going to be more like 2025, uh, maybe mid-year. Who knows? It's, it's always impossible to forecast that. But, you know, for Echo, we're going to, you know, we're, we're continuing to have success. Um, we're actually growing our volumes in this market. So uh, we're, we're, we're very profitable. So we're making investments in the future. You know, I mentioned having a, a roadmap for, uh, data science. We have a roadmap for technology. We're, we're continuing to invest in those areas. And, you know, we want to be the leader in the space uh, that's that's at the front of the pack. So um, we're going to keep keep doing what we're doing and, and uh, wait for the market to improve. And when the market does, I think it's going to be uh, a great time to be in logistics. Absolutely. Sounds great. Well, thanks again for your time. Congratulations again on the win and uh, appreciate your insights. All right, Amy. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Doug. Thank you to Doug Wagner and Echo for joining us for the show. And thank you for watching this Inbound Logistics video podcast. For more episodes, go to www.inboundlogistics.com slash podcast.